I want to talk a little bit about um, why the foundations are interested in this whole idea of evaluation. It's pretty obvious. We ask you all the time, what are your outcomes? Uh, what's your sustainability plan? How are you working together? Well, we're going to spend a little bit of time. I'm going to spend 10 minutes talking about um, the concept of collective impact, um, which is really a kind of a framework of how many foundations and funders are moving, at least in Summit County. United Way has embraced the concept of collective impact, as has GAR Foundation, uh, as well as uh, Akron Community Foundation. Um, and we also have this other group called the Summit County Foundations Coalition, where it's just kind of, most of you know about it, it's just kind of an ad hoc informal gathering of some foundations and private philanthropists who get together and just kind of want to know what's the landscape of philanthropy and, and how are we organizing our grant making and how can we be better at investing our funds in smart organizations like everybody in this room. So we're using the whole concept of collective impact um, to really organize our thinking around problems. And you know, so we're talking usually about social problems or um, problems that you're all trying to solve in your work. Um, there, there may not always be obvious problems. There could just be um, challenges or uh, a variety of constituencies that you're serving, some that are high performing, some that are from poverty, uh, that need a little bit of help or more help than others. So we think about some of these problems in our society as, you know, we usually group them as simple or complicated, but really when you're talking about educating youth, which is really what most folks in this room are dealing with, um, we're really talking about a very complex problem. And we have lots of complex problems in our society, but really I think you might agree, educating youth is probably our most complex problem. Um, and all of you are educating youth. 30% of a child's time or a student's time is spent in an academic, a formal academic setting. So 70% of their time is spent out of school time, OST as we call it. Um, and so we're really trying to um, address the education of our children um, and taking a holistic approach. And that's where funders come in because we know we're funding uh, the good work that you're doing. Traditional approaches we know are not solving the problem. You're used to saying to us, funders, in, in a generic term, if we just had more resources, we could scale up the great stuff that we're doing. We agree. However, we also know that there are not enough resources to go around. And funders have traditionally been part of a problem of how we have always done business to date. We select individual grantees, every one of you in this room, because you're great at what you do. We know that. Um, but we really, by the way that we have asked questions, and by, the, by the way that we have awarded funding, um, we have sought out individual solutions to individual groups and demographic groups. Um, and we know that what we've asked you to do um, depends upon scaling bigger and bigger. And we know it's just not feasible. It's just not possible. There isn't enough money in philanthropy uh, or in the government or in private donations to bring everybody's work to full scale. If there were, we'd already do it. Um, so that's been an isolated impact approach. Collective impact, the concept, asks us to think about this in a completely different and new way. It asks us to think and to imagine a world where we're working all in concert together, where we're working toward the same goal and measuring the same things. And that's where our friends from Summit Education Initiative are going to really help us understand what should we be looking at, what should some of those shared measurements really be. Um, collective impact also asks us to look at cross sectors. Um, we have some arts. Uh, providers in the room. We have some environmental education providers in the room. We have social service providers in the room. We have child care providers in the room. We have 
Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts in the room. A variety of cross sectors, uh, different players, but all to be uh, aligned uh, and coordinating their lessons. This is the concept of collective impact. So this is kind of a quick definition. It's the commitment of all of us, a group of important actors, funders included, to a common agenda. Now, this is, you know, really a great idea, and it's up to um, funders to ask questions that lead us more to an idea about collective impact. There are five elements that identify what real collective impact is. And I know lots of people use the term generically, collective impact, or we're impacting collectively, um, or we use it in a kind of small C and I. This is really the key elements of collective impact as defined. And this concept comes from a group called FSG. John Kenya wrote an article of his observations out of Stanford University about four or five years ago, where he identified this concept of collective impact. And, um, and they first wrote an article about this in 29, 2010, I believe. Anyway, we can get you that reference material. But through his observations around the country and uh, studying and identifying uh, different types of organizations, like Summit Education Initiative, for instance, um, some key elements have emerged. And these are the five things that really define a collective impact effort. Uh, and this is how we are defining it uh, here at our foundation, as well as uh, African Community and United Way. A common agenda, shared measurements, we're all looking at the same key measures, and that's what uh, Summit Ed is going to talk to us about today. Mutually reinforcing activities. You may not be doing the same things uh, or providing the same programming, but you're doing so in concert with one another. You're talking, you're communicating, you're collaborating. This is really what we mean when we ask of you in individual discussions or meetings, how are you collaborating with the next guy? We understand that it's much more difficult uh, to say than to do. Continuous communication, uh, which is really the role of uh, all the players, but supported by a backbone organization. We don't have lots of backbone organizations that have emerged just yet. We're starting to see some examples of this. Um, a national example of a backbone organization is right in our own yard with Summit Education Initiative. There are others. The Strive Partnership out of Cincinnati, uh, the Long Beach Education Partnership in California, and a few others around the country. Certainly not the only ones, but um, uh, some of the most uh, prominent. Working in collective impact requires a mindset shift. I understand these are a little bit uh, tough to see, and we will send out these uh, slides out to you uh, via email after the workshop. But really, collective impact for you all and us to work collectively for impact requires how we work differently. It requires us agreeing on behaviors. Stop looking at the goals and the outcomes and preconceived notions about how we achieve a particular goal and instead, let's talk about how we behave with one another. The, the words that we use, the way that we meet, the trust that we build with one another, the way that we communicate honestly and openly about solutions to very difficult problems. Um, so collective impact says, instead of coming up with that notion ahead of time or the solution ahead of time, and then figuring out how everybody has a piece in it, instead, Focus on the problem first, and then allow some solutions to emerge collectively. It's a very different way, um, a different way of approaching the work. Credibility versus credit. It's up to funders, I believe, um, as well as how you all work together um, to create incentives to work collaboratively instead of competitively. I won't go over this too long, but Collective impact efforts, they have a life cycle. They, they take time to develop, obviously. We don't have a lot of um, uh, examples of this in our local community other than um, 
Summit Education Initiative, and I would say, and Darren might disagree with me, um, Summit Ed is right about here. We're in phase two, organizing for impact, and we have some shared metrics and indicators and an approach to measuring uh, student outcome, which they're going to talk about. Um, but we have, we have a ways to go. Summit Education Initiative is an example of a backbone organization, and they do very specific things under the collective impact model. Guide the vision and strategy community-wide after agreement from all the players. Support aligned activities. Establish shared measured practices. Build the public will. Advance policy, which is very critical, particularly in the education space, as you know. And mobilize funding. These are all uh, functions being undertaken by Summit Education Initiative and supported by philanthropy here in our county. We recognize as funders our role in collective impact and um, that our job is to focus on issues. So you've started to hear from us, at least at GAR and United Way, what are the issues? What are the big issues? What are you looking to accomplish in a major way? And then let's pay attention to the relationships between the organizations. We have heard from uh, many of our applicants and grantees that um, it's really up to us, or at least they have asked us, you have asked us, to identify players that might be good partners with each other. That would be a really good role for us to play, but we would want you also to do that as well. Think about long-term process and gradual impact. So some short-term things, to get to the long-term outcome. For instance, um, one of our um, good applicants, good, good partners, is an organization that is doing uh, some work in mentoring college students, out-of-school time mentoring and programming, um, similar to Project Grad, but uh, a separate organization. And they just say, well, wait for four years until they graduate from high school and get to, and get to college, and then we'll have the outcomes. Well, that doesn't help guide the programming, and that only gives you an outcome after four years. So if you've invested all sorts of time and resources, and you don't know until four years out if it's working, there are some short-term ways um, and measures that we can all come up with that will help us along the way. Building knowledge. The intangible elements, I mentioned a little bit ago, relationship and trust building is pretty critical. We have to think a little bit differently about um, how we talk and behave with one another. Leadership uh, identification and development in your own organizations is critical to collective impact. We, we live a, cr a culture of learning at GAR and United Way. It's, it may seem like a luxury, but uh, it's built into our job description. We have to understand uh, the context in which you're working um, to be good grant makers for our uh, distribution committees and boards. Um, we think creating a culture of learning within everyone's organization is, is beneficial to everybody. Um, fostering connections and really um, fostering hope is what the promise of collective impact means for, for us.